Assyrians invaded and conquered northern Israel 2,750 years ago. Unlike the Babylonians who invaded southern Israel about 150 years later, the Assyrians did not take the people of Israel as captives. Their warring tactic was to make people flee and scatter. And so the people of northern Israel fled and scattered throughout the Asian and African continents. These are the lost tribes of Israel. Yes, it's actually a thing. Over the millennia, these communities lived in isolation, detached from and out of sync with the evolving Jewish communities who emerged from the Babylonian and Roman exiles. For more about Jews from the Babylonian exile, see my first video in this series. In addition, the lost tribes of Israel were a tiny, and in many cases, oppressed minority. So it was extremely challenging for them to preserve and pass on the ancient traditions of Israel. In addition, they were exiled from Israel centuries before the advent of rabbinic law and practice, which dramatically reformed religious ritual and practice of Israel during the time of the Beth Amikdash, the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. For all these reasons, while descendants of the lost tribes continued to preserve and practice remnants of the traditions of Israel, over the generations, those practices became quite different than the practices of Jewish communities who stayed connected to each other and evolved together in the millennia since the Babylonian and Roman exiles. By way of example, in Zimbabwe, there's a tribe called the Lemba. Their belief and practice separates them from others in the region, and their oral history traces them back to the lost tribes of Israel. Several decades ago, they approached the South African Jewish community leadership and shared their origin story. The South African Jewish community is predominantly from Central and Eastern European Jewish heritage, and for a complex number of reasons, detached from the Middle Eastern and African roots and rhythms of the Jewish people. <clears throat> so they responded to the Lemba with disbelief and dismissal, which was painful for the Lemba leaders who were attempting to establish a heartfelt connection with other descendants of their common ancestors. Now, a geneticist from the UK heard about this controversy and flew to Zimbabwe to meet with the Lemba and do genetic testing of the tribe. He discovered that the genetic patterns of Lemba men were identical to the genetic patterns of Jewish men worldwide. Most notably, the priestly clan of the Lemba had an identical genetic pattern to those of the Kohanim, who are worldwide descendants of the priestly clan of Israel and have about five times the prevalence of what is known as the Jewish gene. Despite these discoveries, the worldwide Jewish community continued to have an attitude of disbelief that the Lemba were descendants of the lost tribes. Why? Why? The answer to this question is deep, complex, and beyond the scope of this short video. But you can get into the weeds on topic with my book, The Flying Camel, which is the first anthology by Jewish women of color. You can buy the book on my store at kazoom.com slash shop. Meanwhile, what I will say now is we must recognize that the erasure of history, in particular documented history, is part of the reality of genocide and geopolitical upheaval. We need to honor indigenous oral history, in particular in the case of persecuted people whose continuous presence in their homeland was upended centuries or millennia prior, as in the case of Jews, Africans, Native Americans, and intersecting identities thereof. Which brings me to the Black Hebrews or Black Israelites. Given the realities of invasion, exile, and millennia of persecution facing the lost tribes of Israel, and given the patterns of historical slave trade, namely that persecuted groups were targeted, it is logical that the Africans sold off as slaves to the Americas included descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. Were they a handful? Were they in the majority? I have no idea. 
But it totally makes sense that any number of African-American descendants of slaves are also descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. Did they pick up Christian anti-Semitism along the way? Probably. But so did today's Chicano and Latino descendants of Spanish Portuguese Jews who were forced to convert to Christianity in 1492. Being cut off from the Jewish people and being turned against Judaism is an integral part of the Jewish story worldwide. I embrace those who sincerely are attempting to put together the broken pieces of identity, history, and community. I embrace them with all their contradictions and complexities. I recognize how painful, frightening, and confusing the journey can be. And I see them as my sisters and brothers. In that spirit, I welcome everyone from every ethnicity, religion, sexuality, and gender identity to participate in my online series of Jewish multicultural programs. The next one coming up is this Sunday where I'll be teaching Iraqi singing, drumming, and ululating and sharing personal stories for the holiday of Simchat Torah. No knowledge of Hebrew, Judaism, or Middle East culture is needed to participate fully. Find out more about my program and register for the event at kazoom.com.